are two incredible visionaries. Please join me in welcoming to the stage Elon Musk, the CEO of Tesla, founder of SpaceX, founder of XAI, and Jensen Huang, founder and CEO of NVIDIA. How fast can a nation transform when it pours over $100 billion a year into future technologies? And what happens when two innovators responsible for over 90% of the world's AI progress sit together on one stage? This is exactly what happened at the Saudi summit, where Elon Musk and Jensen Huang revealed how AI, robotics, and entire civilizations are about to change. Saudi Arabia is rapidly becoming a global tech hub, and bringing Elon Musk and Jensen Huang together on one stage shows how serious this shift is. Jensen represents the AI hardware backbone, while Elon is building a full robotics plus AGI ecosystem, and Minister Abdullah Al Swaha connects their ideas to national strategy. Their discussion feels less like an interview and more like a blueprint for the next decade of AI. Understanding their mindset makes it even more intense. Elon relies on first principles thinking to disrupt cars, space, energy, and robotics while Jensen sees AI as the new global infrastructure powered by future AI factories. With one obsessed with compute and the other with AGI, Saudi Arabia positions itself as their intersection point. That's when Abdullah directly asks Elon how he keeps disrupting industry after industry. Their own personal C-3PO R2-D2. Oh uh, yeah? Of course. Everyone would want one, right? And, and then there would be many in industry uh, providing products and services. This is why I say that humanoid robots will be the biggest industry, or the biggest product ever. Um, bigger than cell phones or anything else because everyone's gonna want one, and, uh, or maybe more than, more than one, and there'll be many in industry. Um, I and, just R2-D2 in C-3PO's body. Yeah. There you go. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, to, I mean, a humanoid robot would be better than R2-D2 and C-3PO combined yeah. times 10. So, the, it, it, and, and you know, people often talk about uh, sort of eliminating poverty and that kind of thing, but really, the, the, how long have they been talking about that? Um, there's lots of talk, uh, you know, there's lots of NGOs sort of trying to do these things, but, but really not succeeding. Um, and, 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 you know, the evidence speaks for itself. Uh, but, but, but AI and humanoid robots will actually eliminate poverty. And Tesla won't be the only one that makes them. I think Tesla will pioneer this, but there will be many other companies that make humanoid robots. What Elon says here is important. He doesn't see himself as someone who destroys industries. He sees himself as building new ones. And his final line about humanoid robots becoming the biggest industry of the future? That's not a throwaway comment. It shows where Tesla and XAI are heading. A future where physical labor is performed by machines and poverty becomes a solved problem to be able to build inference node, training nodes, and to be the most AI-enabled nation. With that announcement, tell me what's, what's next in AI factories, uh, Jensen. There, there's, a, there's a beautiful story about how Saudi Arabia's building AI refineries and now building AI factories, or oil refineries to AI factories. I love that. I, you know, I, I've said that, that AI is an infrastructure, and the reason for that, is, of course, we understand AI from the perspective of the technology and how it's revolutionizing every industry. Digital intelligence, of course, has applications into every, every field. And so it's going to be used by every company, every industry, every country. In that way, it's foundational, and therefore it's part of infrastructure. What is new about AI from a computer science perspective is that the way computing was done in the past was largely retrieval-based computing. Mm -hmm. Somebody typed in a story or somebody created a, a piece of art or came, came up with four versions of a digital ad. Or It's all pre-built by somebody, which is then using a system to retrieve the appropriate version for you. It's a retrieval-based computing model. Jensen's section explains why countries must move from data centers to AI factories. Because generative computing is not about storing data, it's about producing intelligence. This is why Saudi Arabia, the US, China, Europe, all of them are racing to build their own national AI factories. 
Whoever owns compute power will own the future. It will generate unique content for you. Every single time for everybody, it's unique. When you use Grok, every time you use it is different. Just based on Grok. the right, based on based on the based on the prompt that you give it, and based on the circumstance, and and so therefore, it used to be retrieval based. Today, it's generative, and if it's generative, then and every time is different, then you need AI factories all over the world to generate the content in real time, which is the reason why you need AI factories. And, and this is a unique way of doing computation, but the benefit, of course, is that everything isn't preconceived and pre-documented, and it's, it's uh, contextually, sen contextually sensible and, and, and therefore intelligent. So AI factories and robotics, and we heard it yesterday from His Royal Highness, his vision, how to augment our workforce with roughly tens of millions of robotics to be able to infuse the next wave of productivity and progress. This part of the interview is where the conversation becomes philosophical. Elon believes that one day, economic scarcity will disappear. Work will become optional. Money itself may change. Meanwhile, Jensen adds a very realistic counterpoint. AI is not here to replace humans, but to amplify them. For example, Radiology isn't disappearing. Instead, doctors will become superpowered with AI assistance. This contrast, Elon's long-term vision versus Jensen's practical short-term view, is what makes this discussion so valuable. It's much harder to grow vegetables in your backyard, but some people still do it because they like growing, growing vegetables. Um, that will be what work is like, optional. Um, and between now and then, there's actually a lot of work to get to that point. Um, and I always recommend people read, read Ian Banks' uh, culture books to get a sense for what a, a probable positive AI future is like. Um, and interestingly, in those books, money is no longer, doesn't exist. It's kind of interesting. And I, I, my guess is, in, in, if you go out long enough, assuming there's a continued Im improvement in AI and robotics, which this seems likely, the money will, will, will stop being relevant at some point in the future. Um, th th now, there will still be constraints on power, like, in it, like electricity and mass. This section of the interview shows how both men are thinking beyond Earth itself. AI in space, solar-powered satellites, off-planet computation. These ideas sound futuristic, but when Elon talks about them, they suddenly start to feel possible. This entire discussion wasn't just about technology, it was about the future of humanity, the role of AI, and how countries like Saudi Arabia are positioning themselves at the center of the new digital world. So the question is, how fast do you think this future is going to arrive? AI in space, is that possible? Uh, yes, if, if civilization continues, which it probably will, uh, then AI in space is inevitable. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I always have to like preface that, you know. We shouldn't take civilization for granted. We, we need to make sure to take care to ensure that civilization has an, an upward arc. I mean, any student of history knows that civilization does not always have an upward arc, and in fact, civilizations have life, life cycles. So hopefully we are in a strong upward arc. I think we are for now, um, but we don't want to take that for granted or be complacent. Um, but the, in order to, the way to think of AI in space is that in order to achieve any meaningful percentage of a Kardashev 2 scale civilization where you're using even a millionth, a millionth uh, of the sun's energy, you must have solar powered AI satellites in, in deep space. Um, so, so that once you realize, like, once you think in terms of a Kardashev 2 scale civilization, which is what, what percentage of the sun's energy are you turning into useful work? This final clip pushes the discussion to the next level. AI is not just a tool for Earth. It's something that will expand into space, powering satellites, exploration, and communication. Elon frames AI as part of humanity's long-term survival strategy. Not just technology, but civilization engineering. It's not just about AI models, chips, or regulations. It's about the next era of global power, the rise of AI factories, the growth of humanoid robots, and the future of life beyond Earth. 
Saudis hosting this conversation shows exactly where they want to position themselves in this new landscape. The real question now is simple. Which countries will adapt fast enough to lead this future, and which will lag behind? We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel.